Let's discuss two major, very popular deadlifting variations today. The conventional deadlift, where my feet are a little bit closer while I'm picking a bar up off the ground, and the sumo deadlift, where my feet are a little bit wider and I can kind of squat down like a sumo person. But it's wrestler, there we go, okay. So, biggest differences. I need more pelvic control and mobility, <laughs> mobility to deadlift with my feet a little bit closer together, okay? What's going on there? So I need more hip flexion because the shape of my hip joint allows my knee to come up more when it's out here. You see how it's up a little bit higher? That wasn't just a parlor trick. I'm gonna to try to bring it in and it's gonna lower, okay? So that's just because of the shape of the hip joint, right? And it, if I think about this motion, that's kinda what this is. That's what a more conventional deadlift stance is. And so a lot of people are gonna find it difficult to get into a conventional deadlift without compromising their back position. So for a lot of new people, when I'm teaching a, a hip hinge, a, a more sumo stance makes a lot of sense, right? If they want to learn how to deadlift from the ground up, a sumo stance is gonna get them there quicker and more safely, just because it's more comfortable. I do like to train people in the conventional stance, and maybe what you do is you start with a sumo, and then you move to an RDL in a more conventional stance. Like that makes a lot of sense to me. Other things, uh, I might just want to try my luck. Start in a conventional stance. I'm gonna start from the top down generally, and I'm gonna teach them how to load their hamstrings first, just like this. And then eventually I'm gonna say, okay, now bend your knees and get down to the ground. Good, just a slight bend, right? Not too much. Don't do this thing, which a lot of people will do. And then it just looks like a wet rag doll <laughs> trying to bend over. Um, so uh, other, the, I mean, the biggest thing is just the mobility, right? Mobility allows me here. Some people will have issues getting into a, um, uh, a sumo stance, right? So if my hips are retroverted, I'm gonna feel pretty good out here and I might actually need to be out here. But if my hips are antiverted, I'm gonna have a lot of motion this way, but I'm not gonna be able to get my feet out very far. I'm definitely not gonna be able to do something like this, right? So these people have a lot of motion this way, which is kind of like this way, and they don't have a lot of motion this way, which is kind of like this way, right? Okay, so you have to consider, you don't have to know if this person is antiverted or retroverted or the degrees of motion within their hip. What you do have to do is notice if they can get it and if they can't get it, give them something else, okay? So that's the big thing. If you're looking at yourself, like let's say you're 23 years old and you wanna learn how to power lift and you looked up something online maybe some five by five program, and you looked up some videos online that aren't mine, <laughs> and you said, okay, a sumo deadlift is gonna make me stronger, so I'm gonna do a sumo deadlift. But you're someone with antiverted hips, and you find it really difficult to get out into this position. Don't force yourself there. You're not gonna be stronger there. You're not gonna keep training there, right? So try to, again, every day, look at yourself very objectively. Try not to fall into your biases. Try not to fall into any you know, confirmation bias or overconfidence bias that you know what you're talking about. None of us know what we're talking about and <laughs> we need to realize that and I've realized that the hard way plenty of times, right? Uh, so that's, you know, that's the big differences between the uh, conventional deadlift and the sumo deadlift. Big things are hip mobility. Some people are stronger here. Some people are stronger here. Sometimes you're stronger here just because, you know, you're, you're not used to pulling that way. Um, I think a lot of people do really well here in a sumo deadlift, um, especially if 
you know, you have some history of low back issues, you're probably gonna do pretty well here. Um, your deadlift generally looks a lot prettier if you're doing it this way. But I will say, you know, I, I feel really comfortable in my hip here, but when I do sumo deadlifts, I get the weirdest, weirdest knee pain. So I don't like sumo deadlifting. I don't feel like I can really load my legs quite as much. And maybe that's because I'm just pretty flexible, right? And I need a little bit of extra stretch in all my muscles to get good leg drive from that. Just a little anecdote, my own little anecdote. Try to experiment, again, put your biases aside. Try not to use too much weight, right? Let's not let ego get ahead of us. Let's make sure we, you know, evaluate ourselves very objectively and find out what works for you.